what's up everybody? So I'm super excited to bring you this video today. This video is one that I did uh, about two years ago at the uh, hospital I worked out in, in Georgia. And this was, I think we did this for like Nurses Week or something back in 2017. This was before I even had a YouTube channel, uh, which is has been about two years ago. I started my YouTube channel about a year and a half ago. So, uh, you know, I just started doing videos and things like that, but I was able to capture this uh, this interview. And the interview is of a World War II nurse, and she goes into some really, really good detail uh, about different things. And I think if you just take the time to watch the video, you will really, really enjoy it. Um, I, I watched I, when I was editing again, I just was taking in all the information she was saying. It was really, really super cool. So uh, without further ado, guys, here's the video. We set up a hospital before we were captured. We left d -Bird that morning and it was cold, very bad weather. And we got east of Hanau and we were fired on. We didn't know what had happened to start with. And a, a major, he, he was on the hospital with the staff I trained with. He was also with the unit, but he was with an evacuation hospital. And he was moving up to find a place to set up an evacuation hospital. So he just passed us and he waved, waved his hat, hand like this. And about that time, everybody stopped. They heard the firing. And we've been told if you get fired, you know, if anybody you're fired on, just and you're in a truck, just put your head down and roll out. Don't stand up. Because it gives them too good a target. So just roll, roll out. Well, he stood up. He, he, the Jeep pulled in just in front of the truck I was in. And he stood up to get out, and he was killed right there. <laughs> me, I put my head down and rolled like the told me. <laughs> and I'm lying in the ditch. Of course, I said, we dressed like a man. We had helmets on. And all of a sudden, I feel this cold thing right at the base of my skull. My helmet was tipped up first. And this was right at the base of my skull. And this voice said, Ralph's. And we knew that meant to get up. And I turned around and looked up at him. When he saw the lipstick, he said, my God, I know how. My God, a woman. <laughs> so I don't know if he was more afraid than I was. Anyhow, he made, he made us get up. And, but made us put our hand up, hand, hand, say, hand to hold, and pass an officer. And this was an SS group. What had happened? Uh, was that the infantry was out ahead. I mean, the uh, armored division was out ahead and the infantry was behind and we were in between. And the Germans had infiltrated. You know, the armored division just went straight through and didn't mop up. So these, the Germans, they just, just came in, they were there. Anyhow, they were going to evacuate us. They put us along the roadside. <clears throat> and uh, the only thing that really frightened me, we had a uh, P-38 came down that road. And we thought he might, you know, strafe us. I was scared to death. And, uh, but they didn't, so he, I guess he recognized them as Army. Uh, Patton quit flying Red Crosses, quit painting Red Crosses because the uh, Germans were moving their equipment under Red Cross, you know, mm -hmm. military equipment. So he had taken the Red Crosses off the, the tents and every truck. So the Germans were doing that so they could transport the stuff <coughs> yeah. Yeah. under the guise mm -hmm. of, of uh, medical? Medical, the, the medical. Mm -hmm. So Patton had taken the uh, Red Crosses off. So that uh, we stood there we wanted to run and get in the woods and this German who was holding us he he looked about maybe half idiot I mean, you know he didn't look very bright really I mean most of them were sharp but this one was one and you didn't know I didn't know what he was going to do but he just he took that uh, machine gun and he go this way he said nine we couldn't get out and get out and move so, Anyhow, two German doctors came along and 
they were going to evacuate us back behind the lines. And they, but they said, no, we said, we've got so many injured. And there was a big farm compound right near. They had a huge house. It was almost hotel-like. And inside the walls, <clears throat> the walls probably covered about four city blocks. They had housing for their help and animals, farm animals and equipment. And so they moved us in there and the nurses were moved inside into the house, into the building. I had some of the best soup I ever had in my life that night. It wasn't anything but potatoes and a ham bone, I think, in the pot of soup, but it was good. And we stayed there and I thought it was two or three days but after the war, I couldn't remember the name of the town that, you know, that we were near when they were captured. So I wrote the uh, War Department and asked where this unit had been captured, and they told me. They wrote and told me where it was. <clears throat> so when I lived there, I went back. <clears throat> and the one thing I remembered about it, uh, evidently a machine gun shell or something had gone through and broken. This was, I mean, stones that were put, I mean, put together. And it had a big dent in it. And uh, when I went back, it was still there. Wow. So, and we had bond plates on the car, and the woman, I walked up to the door, and I asked her if this is where um, American medical unit was during the war. And she looked so frightened, I said, look, we're not with the embassy or anything. I said, I just happened to be one of the one that was here. So she invited me in for coffee. So uh, I just thought, well, I don't know what I thought. But anyhow, the Army told me we were held three weeks. I, it, it doesn't seem like it. I thought a couple of days or something. Mm -hmm. But one day is just like another. And that picture you saw up there, the Signal Corps came. The 5th Infantry finally got there and mopped up and got us out. And uh, that picture, the Signal Corps came and took us. We had to go to the Quartermaster. We didn't have any clothes except the ones we stood up in, which we wore in three weeks. So, yeah. <clears throat> Needless to say. So they took those pictures. And we were pretty sad. We had our helmet full of water and we washed our underwear <laughs> after we had a bath. <laughs> so.